So I've come out for a bit of a road trip this morning since it's uh, it's really interesting weather. It's really foggy, but it's really low fog. Um, you might be able to see in the background, it could be a bit blown out. There's really low fog hanging through all of the clouds and it's uh, creating this for some really, really atmospheric images. I've got on my 7200 on my R6 today, just so I can get that compression and get that, that extra bit of reach to get up into the hills and down some, some dirt roads. Let's take some photos. So the photos I've just taken aren't quite exactly what I want. Uh, the foreground's pretty pretty well exposed, um, but the fog and cloud is completely blown out. That's the difficulty with these scenes. The, the fog and the cloud is super, super bright compared to everything else. So I can do one of two things. I can severely underexpose the foreground, or I can do a three image HDR stack. Uh, so I'll do both of them now, and I'll show you the results in just a minute. So with these sorts of scenes, I typically lean towards a, a three image HDR stack just so it's got some more uh, resolution. Um, I tend to find that if you severely underexpose the foreground, you end up having to bring the shadows up massively as that would make sense, but you end up with a, you end up with a reasonable amount of noise um, and that can be completely avoided by just doing a three image HDR stack. It gives you the, the bandwidth that three images do at three different exposures. Um, one being slightly overexposed, one being in the middle of exposure and one being slightly underexposed. I tend to prefer doing it that way. Um, I've only got a 20 megapixel camera, so it's not like it's gonna take a massive uh, strain on my, my computer to process the image. And I, I find that I end up with better results. I've been doing this, this technique since I was probably 17. So I've been doing it for the last three-ish years, and I've never really had an issue. Started doing it on a Canon 750D, a crop sensor APS-C body. Really enjoyed it there. It made a lot more sense to it there because the, the bit depth of those files wasn't very big like they are on modern cameras now. But even with the bit depth on the cameras now, why would I want to stretch the file as much as possible and potentially end up with a high amount of noise in my image when I can just avoid it completely and just do a stack? Totally different story for event photography and, and for sports and things like that. It totally makes sense to underexpose your images then or even straight because uh, oftentimes you don't have the the ability to stack those images because you've got moving subjects and for an, for an image stack you do need stationary subjects. Totally understand the argument for those but for landscapes and for, for scenery photos there's no reason not to. It's honestly one of my favourite ways to shoot if I'm, if I'm being 100% honest. So now I'm going to head back out on the way to Jamison and Goffs Bay. Um, there's a spot out there that I really like. It looks over a, a paddock into a, I think it's a hay shed. Um, typically cloud around there looks really cool and the cloud tends to be a bit more heavy on that side of town. So I'm going to go for a bit of a drive out there and see what I can find. Let's go. Slight change of plans just before I head out to uh, that spot that I was talking about before. I've driven up the road a little bit further and the cloud and fog is just lifting out of the valley now. So I'm going to take my 70 to 200 and I'm going to shoot across the valley and might do a couple of panoramas as well. Um, probably make them HDR as well just in case. Um, getting really excited about this shot. I think this could be really cool. Let's go. They might not need to be HDR. This isn't anywhere near as dynamic as the scene before, so I can just underexpose and bring everything up in post without having to worry about any sort of extra noise or anything. Um, let's go. 
There's also a couple of cows in this paddock that I think I might take some photos of. Uh, the R6 has animal eye detection, so I'm gonna test that out and see how that goes. Uh, hopefully my 7200 has enough reach, but we'll see. Head out to Jamison. So I've just arrived at the spot that I was talking about before. It's on a on someone's farm, um, but there's a little spot you can pull over on the side of the road, so you can avoid getting hit by a car. Um, the scene is really awesome. Uh, there's not as much fog, fog as I was hoping, but I'll just show you now. Obviously that'll look better on a 7200. Um, I'm on a 15 to 30 right now, so it doesn't really show it that well. But let's take some photos on a 7200 and see how it goes. One of my favorite things to do on a scene like that is to do a, a panorama. I know it's probably getting a bit old, me talking about panoramas, but they are one of my favourite things to do. You get a really interesting perspective on things. You get the detail that a you get the detail that a closer lens gives you, something like a 7200 at 200, but it also gives you the the wider field of view that a wider lens would give you, something like a, a 24. Scenes like this, in particular, play really well into it. Um, stationary object, clouds aren't moving all that quickly, and neither are the the livestock. Um, they just add some some sort of atmosphere to it. And if they are blurry, I can quite easily Photoshop them out in post. Let's head out to another spot. I've come to one of the least known spots to view Mount Buller, uh, one of the biggest snowfields in Victoria. Not many people from outside of the area know about this spot. It's not a spot that people drive into because it's just farms and properties. You end up coming over this bit of a crest and there's a really, really big section you can pull over in and you get a straight through clean view of Mount Buller through the clouds. Especially on a day like today, there's clouds sitting just above it and fog sitting in the valley just underneath it. So I'm gonna quickly grab my 7 200 and take some photos of this before the moment passes. I'll show you the photos in a second once I take them. Mount Buller has always been a subject that I found really hard to photograph. There's a lot of good spots to view it as a, a person, just to have a look at it, but there's not many really good spots to photograph it. Um, most of them are obstructed by trees or large amounts of land in front of them, but this is probably one of the best spots I've found to be able to photograph it from. I'm not really having any issues and I'm genuinely really happy with the photos I've got of it. I'll throw up some photos that I've had before of the mountain. Um, I have never been really a massive fan of them, but seemingly driving in sort of a diagonal direction from the mountain I've ended up in a really interesting spot. Um, I used to learn how to drive through here so in Victoria you've got to get 120 hours to be able to try for your license so me and my dad used to just go for drives around town and this would be one of the routes that we'd take to help get my hours up. This is the first time I ever noticed the mountain though. I didn't actually come out this way to photograph the mountain, but I'm really happy that I noticed it. This really big pullover spot's a, a really big bonus as well. It's 100% safe, I don't have to worry about cars coming over the crest, it's, it's really easy. Let's take some more. Gonna go for a little bit more of a drive and see where it takes me. So I've just sort of followed the fog out of town. Um, I've come down the some of the back roads behind Mansfield um, and I've found some really interesting scenes. There's a, a cattle shed by the looks of it uh, where they do sheep shearing and it's really surrounded heavily by fog. It's also lined with a whole bunch of trees and it could make for a really interesting shot with the 7200 down the dirt road. Um, 
Gonna try a couple of different compositions and see what happens. So I think I shoot a little bit differently to most people. When I'm shooting vertically, I typically am shooting for Instagram. So I'm shooting for a, a 4x5 crop. So it's a little bit shorter than a typical full length 35mm uh, full frame sensor. Um, but when I shoot horizontally, I shoot for 16x9. I think it's a really interesting and cinematic look. Uh, just cropping to 16 by 9 because it's the aspect ratio of video. It makes it feel a lot more cinematic and especially in scenes like this, you can end up with a really, really good movie feel. I'll show you some examples. This is a shot that's at a full, full size, full frame sensor. And this is the same shot cropped to 16 by 9 just feels a lot better to me. Um, I don't know why, it, I think it's just, I honestly just think it's because that's the format that most video is shot in now, especially movies. move a little bit closer and see if I can do something with this shearing shed. Okay, so as you might see in the background around right about there, there's the shearing shed. It looks, it's a lot closer than it looks like in this shot, just because this shot's done at 15 mil, so I can, so I can stand in it. I think I'll be shooting it with the tw the 7200. If that's a bit too tight, I might switch over to the 24 to 70. Should be a really interesting scene. It's going to be a, a single subject. I might try and include one of these trees in the, in the foreground there, just for a bit of depth, because there's going to be realistically no background with all this fog. It's going to be some level of grey or white once once the editing's done. Could possibly boil it all the way out to pure white, but I don't really like to do that. I like to keep some sort of detail in the highlights. But we'll see what happens. So a 7 200 sitting at 70 mil seems to be the perfect focal length for this shot. Did a little bit of a HDR as well, just in case. Did a bit of a HDR as well, just in case I need to preserve some of that detail in the fog there. I think I might head back home, dump these files onto my laptop, and a little bit of editing and see how they come out. So as you can see, the fog photos turned out really cool. I wasn't really sure what I was expecting when I went out that morning. It could have turned out really badly. Um, I tend to struggle to photograph my local area. Um, but it could have turned out really, really well. And I'm pretty pleased with how most of the photos turned out. Especially a lot of the panoramas. Uh, they turned out a lot better than I thought they were going to. Um, just, yeah, the amount of detail they have in them, the, the scenes that they, they depict are really cool. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and drop a comment down below on what you thought of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.